Hi, this is Jim, FRC Mentor. I've just had a real quick item on game-related data. And it turns out from time to time, uh, in fact, this technique is useful for a lot of different uh, applications. But in this case, from time to time, we have need to look at how different elements work in the FRC uh, scope of things. Specifically, in the WPI Robotics Library, the driver station has its own palette, and we don't have a lot of call to uh, deal with it, but this, what I'm about to go through, is a good way to see what's available and how it looks to the program, and it's useful in other uh, palettes as well. So what basically the bottom line is I create an indicator for the output of some unknown uh, device, and then I write that value to the variable list on the dashboard, uh, and in some cases to the robot global data, but it gives me the, the ability to see how it looks to the program itself. So in this case, as I jump into uh, lab view, you're going to see I want to look at match time, game data, and mode and status, and all these are on the driver's station. I'm going to create an indicator to see how it looks and then write it to the dashboard and again, see how it, it shows up on that end. So let's jump into lab view. What I'm doing at this point is I want to make something to happen just before the teleop session times out. And so I'm going to place those icons in the program, create an indicator, and then see how they, how they arrive at the other end. All right, what I'm doing is uh, opening up a project that I have that I know runs in the simulator and in periodic task VI, I'm going to look at the block diagram and I've noticed in the library that these elements appear in the driver's station palette and uh, don't often get a chance to play with them. But the ones that sound interesting are match time, game data, and mode status which uh, I've already put on my one-line diagram. And since I don't know what the, uh, rather, on my block diagram, and anytime I put down a new element like this that has an output I'm not sure of, I right-click and create an indicator to show me what type of data it is. So in this case, it looks like it's a string. And in this case, it looks like it's a numeric value. And in this, when I uh, created the indicator, it shows me some sort of enum, uh, all of which are not, I'm not sure I'm going to deal with all of them, but I'm going to write them to the uh, dashboard with a write number VI. And so in case of match time, I'm just going to connect that numeric value to the, to the numeric input. I'm going to now, I've actually played, we've played with game-specific data, so I know what that's going to look like. And as I create an indicator, I'm going to create an indicator here on match time. It's going to show up on the front panel. So if I can, if I can run, here's my match time as an indicator. Here's my robot mode as an enum. And I'm also writing these to, uh, to the dashboard. All right, so... Um, I believe I can keep this panel open as I run the simulator, but in my case, if I had a physical robot, this information would be re available as I ran the physical robot. So now we're going to launch the driver station and the simulator and see where this stuff shows up. So here's my driver station, and what I want to display is the variables list that will uh, come active when I'm running code. I'm going to go into my robot main and right click and aim it towards my computer, target my computer, which means it'll be the simulator that runs. And then I'm going to leave a periodic task open and it may or may not display it would if I had a physical robot. So let's see what happens. When my uh, mouse icon finishes being busy, I can launch the uh, simulator. So as we open up the simulator window, we are looking at the simulator up here. All right, let's look at our dashboard listing. 
And what we're looking for are the variables. Here we have game mode, which looks like a numeric match time. And right now I'm in practice mode. So the other thing I wanted to look at is my block. Uh, here is periodic task. All right, so here's what's being displayed in the program, and here's what's being displayed in the dashboard. Now, when I enable the dashboard down here on the bottom left, I'm going to be in practice, so it's going to give me a 10-second countdown and then go into autonomous and then go into a teleop. So let's kind of watch what happens here. And it restart. All right, so game mode went to one, match time went to my 15 second, it's counting down. This is in autonomous. Same thing here, time's out, it goes to zero, which was disabled, and then it goes back to game mode three, which is teleop enabled, and it counts down from 130 some odd seconds. So if I wanna do something at the tail end of the match, I need to look at both the game mode and the time that I'm looking at it. So I can make those conditional upon some event that, uh, that I need in my program. I thought this was kind of fun, and I hope you appreciate it. Again, what we saw was the ability to look at those as indicators, both in the periodic task front panel, and we could look at it also as robot global data if we, that's where we wrote it. And we also saw it in the dashboard as we ran the program or the simulator. Uh, be happy to ask, answer questions or uh, look at your code if you're having a problem. Good luck this season.